Good afternoon. We will continue our discussion on experimental methods in fluid mechanics and today we will try to discuss about the thermocouple compensation. In fact, if we try to recall that we have started our discussion on the transient response of the thermal systems and we have tried to model, we have tried to you know, uh, you know represent the response characteristics of a thermal system taking an example. And in continuation of that, we will see today what is thermocouple compensation, why do we need to study the thermocouple compensation and what are the different you know methods available for the compensation of the thermocouple. So, you know if we try to recall that uh, uh, transient response. of the thermal system. What is that? In fact, uh, we have seen that say we have one object and the object is placed in a convective environment. So, this object is placed, so this object is placed in convective environment. Then if we place this say mass of the object is m, then specific heat is c, right. And this object is placed suddenly in a convective envir environment and T infinity is the temperature of the conv convective environment and h is the convective heat transfer coefficient. So, these are the object specification that is mass of the object is given by m, specific heat is given by c and the object is placed in a convective environment where temperature is t infinity and heat capacity uh, in specific heat capacity is sorry uh, convective heat transfer coefficient is h and temperature is t infinity. So, this is temperature and this is convective uh, heat transfer coefficient. Right? If we can, uh, if we can, rather our objective would be to cast, rather to model the system uh, mathematically so that we can study the transient response. That means, if we place the object in the convective environment where temperature is T infinity and object temperature is T. So, these are the environment characteristics and these are the object uh, features. Now, we can assume that the you know thermal conductivity of the object material is sufficiently larger than the larger than the surface conduction surface conduction because of the surface conduction because of the convective heat transfer. 
So, if we consider this assumption, so this is 1 assumption, then we can now model this system that means in a convective environment one object is suddenly placed, then we can write the equation that is H A t minus t infinity or t infinity minus t that is m c that is m into c into d t by d small t. So, this is that means, if we place the object in that environment the temperature will be transferred from the environment into the object and this is the equation. So, what is what will be the time required for which you know object te uh, temperature of the object and temperature of the environment will be in equilibrium. So, this equation in fact, this equation we have uh, studied in the last you know class and we have uh, tried to obtain the solution of this equation and the solution of this equation is t minus t infinity divided by t naught minus t infinity that equal to e power minus h a you know by m c into small t, where T naught is the temperature of the object at time t equal to 0. So, this is the initial condition and we have obtained this expression. If we try to recall that this H a by m into c, this we have tried to uh, you know uh, express this quantity uh, by another term say this is k. Now, what we can see from this expression that for a particular material c is constant, convective heat transfer will be constant, mass if we fix the shape of the object then it will be constant. So, what we can do we can increase the area or decrease the area and that is what we have established in the last class the effect of area the temperature you know if the object size is reduced then we can that is good for the system that is what we have derived in the last lecture. Now, uh, so what we can see from this expression that you know that means when so if I go to the next slide that means H A by M C. So, that means when heat transfer coefficient is you know sufficiently large there will be you know uh, you know significant temperature gradient within the object. So, this also has an important effect. So, what you can see from this expression is that the transient response characteristics of a particular system if the object is now thermometer. So, if we now go back to my previous slide if this object is thermometer and we are placing we are inserting this thermometer in a fluidic environment and there is a flow of fluid. So, we can measure the temperature. Now, depending upon the convective heat and mass convective heat transfer coefficient and also 
the other things that means the transient response characteristics will depends upon many uh, you know parameters and that is what we have you know established in the last lecture. So, today in continuation of that we would like to see the thermocouple compensation. So, that means we have understood we have tried to you know in fact today uh, I have tried to you know uh, recapitulate what we have established in the last lecture and we have understood that there are a few factors which influence the transient response characteristics of a particular system. Okay. Now, question is that what is thermocouple compensation? So, this is very important that before we go to discuss about the thermocouple compensation, it is important to know why this thermocouple compensation is important and what is that? Why need to compensate and what we need to compensate? That means, when we talk about thermocouple compensation, what factor we need to compensate and why you need to compensate. So, these two important questions we try to address uh, in this class and then we will try to see if we need to compensate a thermocouple when thermocouple is measuring temperature in an environment where there is a you know step change uh, in temperature input. So, uh, to uh, address these two questions if we try to recall rather we will try to we will try now to represent the schematic of a thermocouple and we will see uh, definitely that uh, we will see that uh, the role of thermocouple and then from there we will try to understand what, what is that important aspect, what is that important feature of a thermocouple we need to compensate. Okay. So, if we try to you know draw the schematic. Uh, So, this is one junction, junction say J2, uh, this is voltmeter, this is ice water bath. this is junction J2, J1 and this is hot hot end and this is cold end. So, this is you know we have discussed in one of my previous lectures that the you know there are three important effect and these effects can be exploit, exploited to develop the temperature temperature measure uh, measuring instrument. So, now this thermocouple if we you know now look at the schematic there are two ends there is you know uh, there are uh, two different uh, oils that is iron and copper and we have we know that you know there are two different junctions that is junction J 1 that is uh, hot end another junction that is uh, J 2 that is cold end and that junction is uh, in the ice water bath. And so, the what is the you know basic you know principle of the thermocouple? Uh, in this context, I would like to give you an example. If you would like to blow air through a straw, then we 
we can uh, we can understand that uh, there will be a flow of fluid flow of air from high pressure end to the low pressure end. Now, the similar concept can be used to explain the principle of the thermocouple when it measures temperature. So, there is two different ends one is hot end and another is the cold end. Now, hot end the temperature is higher and because of this higher temperature electrons will be excited and there will be you know uh, I can say you know uh, um, you know speedy movement of the electrons. So, the movement the and another is another end is the cold end where electron movements are very low. So, the electrons will now move from hot end to the cold end and there will be a flow of current. So, that that is now connected to the voltmeter. So, we can measure the uh, EMF that is the um, I mean uh, electromotive force. Now, that means that is the Seebeck effect. So, that means when electrons are excited at the hot end and because of this excitation higher energy electrons will now move towards the cold end because the cold end the electrons movement is very slow they are you know closely I mean spaced. Now, question is we can measure so there because of this movement of the electron there will be flow of current and we can measure the you know voltage. Now, knowing the voltage from the voltmeter we can correlate the temperature at the hot end and that is the basic principle of the th thermocouple. Now, do we really get the absolute temperature at the hot end using this thermocouple? My answer is no, because when we use thermocouple, we essentially measure the difference in temperature. That means, we measure the temperature between the hot and cold end and that is why it is mandatory that if we somehow can place the cold end at the ice water bath and if we can maintain the temperature of the cold end at 0 degree Celsius temperature or 32 degree Fahrenheit, then by knowing the voltage we can correlate the temperature of the hot end. So, that means to know the temperature at the hot end we need to know the voltage as well as the temperature at the cold end and cold end, temp cold end temperature is known since it is placed that is the junction J2 is placed in a in an ice water bath. So, what will happen? This is the you know laboratory setup, but thermocouples are most are most of the time rather I can say uh, thermocouples are used in many real life applications. In that case, the thermocouple will be taken from the lab and it will be you know uh, placed in different temperature sensor. In that case, it is very difficult to have a cold water uh, I mean ice water bath and to maintain the cold end temperature at 0 degree Celsius. So, what I would like to say that this schematic which I have drawn here that is you know uh, I mean what is done in the laboratory laboratory scale experiment, but when you take this thermocouple from the laboratory to define temperature sensor for measuring temperature in different real life applications, then it is very difficult to maintain the temperature of the cold end will remain at 0 degree Celsius. Now, if that temperature I mean we would not be able to maintain the temperature at 0 degree Celsius temperature, instead we need to include another electronic circuit to, to replace this cold water uh, cold end. And when we are including another electronic circuit that means we are introducing an error that means the voltage we are measuring be between these two ends cold hot end and cold end that measurement in voltage will essentially give us the temperature and that correlation is available in table. But in any case if we remove this ice water bath and if we try to mimic this end using another electronic circuit we will not be able to maintain the temperature at 0 degree Celsius that is true. On the other hand the voltage that we will now measure that will leads to an error in the thermocouple voltage. So, we need to now compensate that compensate because of this replacement of this ice water bath we need to compensate and that is what is known as cold junction you know compensation of the thermocouple. So, that is that means thermocouple
you know cold end will be at a temperature which is not at 0 degree Celsius or 32 degree Fahrenheit, right. If that is the case, then what will happen? That means, we need to that is very true for the real life applications. We cannot maintain, we cannot ensure the temperature of the cold end will be at 0 degree Celsius temperature. If that is the case, then electronic circuit that means I can say that electronic circuit replaces the ice water bath and because of that it is very difficult to maintain that the temperature thermocouple cold end temperature will be at a temperature which is not at 0 degree Celsius temperature. So, now we have understood at least that why we need to go for compensation and what is an important aspect, what is an important you know uh, uh, I can say factor that should be compensated. So, uh, you know that electronic circuit as I wrote in the previous slide, electronic circuit replaces the ice water bath by adjusting by how? By adjusting the voltage as if cold end was in an ice bath, right. So, this is the case that means, since it is not possible to maintain to keep the ice water bath in real life applications we should have an electronic circuit and that will replace the cold ice water bath by adjusting the voltage and, and as if the cold wa cold end was in the ice bath. When we are doing so, this you know in this aspect that means, when we are you know including uh, when we are including one uh, electronic circuit in the uh, thermocouple that, that means, when the thermocouple is now integrated with this electronic circuit essentially to replace the cold water bath, what we are doing? We are introducing introducing a potential difference rather I can say we are introducing we are I mean the thermocouple uh, ends and the measuring system adds a you know potential difference difference to the uh, potential difference to the thermocouple voltage or thermoelectrical thermoelectric voltage uh, 
right and this issue this aspect introducing an error voltage and this error voltage needs to be compensated needs to be compensated corrected right so i hope you have understood that what is an important factor that should be corrected or compensated and now we will go we will you know go to see rather we will move to see uh, what are the different methods available to compensate that error voltage. So, now we will move to see the thermocouple compensation methods and this is sometimes known as coal junction compensation. That is C J C that is C J C that is known as coal junction compensation. Okay. So, next we will discuss about the different methods which are available for the thermocouple compensation. So, I mean we will discuss I mean one important method which is used to compensate this thermo uh, you know that uh, error which is introduced and we will discuss uh, this method taking an example where we have seen where we will see that thermocouple is used to measure temperature rather used to measure a you know temperature where there is a step change. That means, what I would like to see we will discuss an important method which is used for the compensation and we will discuss this method taking an example where thermocouple is considered to measure temperature in an envi environment where there is a step change effect. So, we will discuss now. So, if we now discuss that uh, thermocouple uh, compensation using step change method we, we know step change environment step change temperature environment. So, as I said that uh, we can compensate this using two important methods using two different methods right. One is you know known as passive method and other is known as active met method right. Passive method or RC method that is essentially you need to introduce an electronic circuit and we will see how we can really compensate that and that is nothing but resistance capacitance method. So, RC method RC circuit we should include an active operational amplifier method which is active method active operational amplifier method. Right. So, uh, these two methods are typically used to compensate that error, but today we will you know uh, focus our attention rather we will you know restrict our discussion on the passive method. So, that means today we will discuss this compensation thermocouple compensation issue with the passive method and of course, taking an example where thermocouple is placed to measure temperature in an environment where there is a step change you know uh, temperature effect. 
So, we will discuss this you know uh, uh, the, with a schematic depiction, but you know that thermocouple compensation using passive method that is RC method. Right, and for that we will discuss suppose a uh, thermocouple rather we consider a uh, thermocouple you know is used to measure you know a transient temperature variation when subjected to strip change in environment temperature. That is what we will do today. So, uh, of course, uh, towards this you know towards the end of this exercise we will try to you know uh, discuss about the advantage of using this method and of course, uh, what are the disadvantages of course, uh, these methods will be discussed and uh, we also will try to discuss the advantage of the active method. So, now we will discuss this taking an example. So, uh, we need to know what are the you know we, we, dis we will discuss using a schematic depiction. So, this active method that is what I was telling this active method you know thermocouple compensation this that is RC method and uh, you know uh, we will show the typical you know passive uh, thermocouple compensation circuit. right so if we try to draw the schematic uh, in fact we have drawn the schematic in the in one of in in the previous slides now so this is the input voltage say ei and then this is the output voltage E naught and this is one resistance R and this is R C and this is capacitance C and this is the thermocouple. So, the typical passive thermocouple compensation circuit is shown here and uh, this E i now I am writing what is E i, what is E naught and what is R. So, if I write this you know thermo thermocouple input thermocouple input 
thermocouple input voltage is E i output voltage is E naught right. So, now if I so that means the thermocouple input voltage is E i and output voltage is E naught. If we now do the you know exercise then we can write that you know from the schematic the current drawn by the by a capacitor that is shown in the circuit is given by you know I equal to C into d V by d T where C is the capacitance of the circuit. Similarly, we can write the current drawn by a resistor is given by I equal to V by R. Now, if we go to the previous slide, so what we can see the voltage across the you know resistor RC and capacitors will be equal. So, the voltage across the resistance RC and capacitor will be equal. So, if I write this the voltage across the capacitor and resistor you know will be equal. And will be equal and this will be E i minus E naught that is input minus output voltage. So, we can write that I equal to C into D E i minus E naught divided by D T plus 1 upon R C into E i minus E naught will be equal to E naught upon R right. Now, if the current drawn by the voltmeter is nil, then we get another equation and that equation if I write we will get d e naught d t plus r plus r c into you know uh, I can say r into e naught divided by r c into c equal to d e i by d t plus 1 upon r c into c into e i, where e i is the forcing function and E naught is the function that we wish to find, right. So, we have now model the system, we have you know arrived at 
the you know situation where we need to solve this equation where e i is the forcing function and e naught is the function that we is to find. So, that means as I said that I mean that uh, that error you know voltage. So, this output voltage that we need to find out and and that is ob that will be obtained using this equation. Now, uh, we can simplify this equation, we can simplify we get we can simplify this equation if we now consider that uh, alpha equal to r upon r plus r c and tau c equal to r c into c. Then we are doing this for the sake of simplicity in the analysis, then we can write the equation will be d naught d t plus 1 upon alpha tau c into e naught will be equal to d e i by d t plus 1 upon tau c into e i right. So, this is the equation we need to solve where e i is the forcing function and e naught is the function that we wish to measure. Now, uh, we will limit ourselves to the solution. I am writing we will limit ourselves to the solution for a sinusoidal input. If we can recall that in the beginning of this exercise, we have assumed that we are interested in modeling the thermal response, you know, uh, uh, of the uh, uh, thermocouple, where thermocouple is placed in an environment which is subjected to a step change in environment temperature. That means, the forcing function is sinusoidal that is step change. So, now if we consider that a sinusoidal input that is you know E i that is f sin omega t plus phi. If we consider this step change input that thermocouple would be in a position to measure the temperature would like to see the thermal response characteristics of the thermocouple where input is sinusoidal. Now, considering E i we can you know write the equation again that will be d E naught d t E naught we wish to measure we wish to find that is our uh, final objective. Now, plus 1 upon alpha tau c into E naught that will be equal to f omega cos omega t plus phi. If we write plus f by tau c into sin omega t plus phi right. So, this equation we have to solve and the solution is obtained the, the solution is obtained if we assume that E naught equal to C naught sin omega t plus phi plus C 1 cos omega t plus phi right. And I am not going to write the intermediate steps. In fact, if we go ahead with some algebraic manipulations and rearrangement, then ultimately we will get the final solution E naught that will be equal to you know uh, we need to find out C 1 and C naught and then ultimately we will get 
alpha f root of 1 plus omega square tau c square divided by 1 plus alpha square omega square tau c square into sin omega t plus phi plus phi e, where phi e will be equal to tan inverse omega into tau c 1 minus alpha divided by 1 plus alpha omega square tau c square. Right. So, this is the uh, solution and that is what we wanted to find out. So, we got this expression. Now, that is the output voltage and that is very important to know and that because knowing this parameter we can I mean compensate. Okay. So, now question is we will see the characteristics and that is what uh, we have started that means we have started our discussion that means we need to know the thermal response characteristics of the thermocouple after compensating this error voltage using an electronic circuit and what will be the characteristics and then what what will be the you know important features you know that means after uh, you know having other after so you know we, we will try to rip, uh, you know graphically show the variation of a few important parameters and from there we will try to draw a few important conclusions. Okay. So, now uh, what we can say that uh, I mean if we use if we use f equal to capital F divided by root of 1 plus omega square into tau t square. where tau t equal to 1 upon k right uh, that is uh, uh, with response of the thermocouple we obtain um, if we use this then we can obtain E naught equal to alpha into capital F root of 1 plus omega square tau c square divided by um, in fact if i go to the previous slide okay uh, omega square plus tau c square divided by 1 plus omega square into tau t square into one plus alpha square om omega square into tau c square into sin omega t plus phi plus phi. So, this is you know the final solution we can write where we have a represented small f by these quantities I mean uh, f by this where tau t is equal to 1 by k the thermocouple you know res the response of a thermocouple. Uh, uh, of a thermocouple. So, so that means this we have done essentially for the simplicity in the analysis. Now, f is the amplitude. This f is the amplitude if we try to recall of the thermocouple voltage. And that means, so the low frequency that is omega tends to 0 E naught will be equal to alpha into f response low frequency response of the circuit is an attenuated thermocouple signal right not only that 
the net amplitude response is given by g equal to E naught by E naught when omega tends to 0. Then we can write that is nothing but 1 plus omega square tau c square divided by 1 plus omega square tau t square into 1 plus alpha square tau c square into omega square. So, this is the net amplitude. Now, if I try to you know draw a few uh, I mean the variation that is what we need to show you know now I will try to draw the G equal to omega tends to 0 that is omega into tau t this is omega into tau t. Now, g will be equal to 1 uh, of course, when this is near about 100 and this is 100, this is 1, this is 1.0, this is 1.0 and this is g, this is g. Then uh, we will get you know profile like this. So, if we now consider tau c by tau t and that is uh, if we try to recall that tau c by tau t uh, uh, if we consider now tau c by tau t we will get different kind of profile. So, this is tau c by tau t that equal to uh, 2, this is for tau c by tau t equal to 1 and this is for 0 0.5. Similarly, if we try to draw, we will get you know profile like this. This is for the 1 this is alpha, this is for the alpha that alpha. So, this is for you know alpha equal to 0 point typical behavior I am trying to show uh, the effect of r that is r equal to tau c by tau t and this is for r equal to 1, but for different values of alpha that is alpha equal to you know uh, 1. If we try ok, so alpha this is alpha equal to 1, uh, no this is alpha equal to 0 0.1, this is alpha Again, this is the you know uh, graphical plot. So, this is alpha equal to 1 and this is alpha equal to 0.3. So, what we can see from the figure is that ok, I will try to draw a few conclusion. So, this is the figure what we can see. Uh, what we can see that this is very important ultimately to draw the conclusion. So, the advantage of the passive RC circuit, what are the advantage we can see from the circuit is that it is very important 
that at least uh, what we have you know drawn from the schematic is that if we try to look at the schematic schematic that for r equal to tau c by tau t and alpha these two parameter we have changed and what we can see that when r is greater than 1 right then undesirable maxima occurs in the amplitude right when r less than 1 then un an undesirable and undesirable kink appears. So, if we go to the previous slide we can see when when r less than 1.5 an undesirable kink is appearing and when greater than 1 an undesirable maxima occurs right so that that means what it is true that the thermal and these observations you know suggest that thermal and circuit time that is r tau c by tau t thermal and circuit time constants must be equal right this is important that uh, uh, very important and we have seen that when alpha decreases and finally, you can write that uh, when alpha decreases, the extent of linear response increases, right. So, this is one important point from the figure itself when alpha increases uh, when alpha alpha decreases the response of the uh, extent of linear response will increase so that means from this two variation i can say the we have to be careful so this is another important point we have to be careful in setting the circuit time constant right that means we need we are trying to compensate for that we should be careful the circuit time constant that means compensation circuit is set that means compensation circuit is set by examining by examining the non temperature signal so this is last an important conclusion of this analysis is that when we are planning to design a circuit compensation circuit circuit will be designed will be set by examining the known temperature signal that is very important. Finally, in this context we can you know discuss that advantage of the passive RC circuit is that what are the different advantage I am writing in fact I am writing over here that advantage of the passive RC circuit. So, advantage of passive 
RC circuit. What is this? That no need of additional power. However, there is an important disadvantage. What is the disadvantage? That overall response is attenuated and which making the measurement difficult, more difficult. So, this is the disadvantage that of the passive RC circuit and advantage is that no additional power is required or power to be supplied. So, to summarize today's discussion, we have recapitulated the thermal response characteristics modeling equation. From there, we have tried to understand there are several factors issues which are important to consider to for the thermal response characteristics that that uh, thermal response of a system will depends upon so many factors and that is what we have identified. Then we have tried to understand what you know a thermocouple you know when uh, when we use a thermocouple then what is an important factor which is which we need to compensate and uh, in fact we have identified the factor we need to compensate and if you would like to compensate that factor what are the different methods available. Finally, by identifying the basic of the operation of the thermocouple we have understood that we have identified the factor which you need to compensate and then we have discussed there are discussed that there are two important methods available to for the compensation one is the passive RC circuit which is included in the thermocouple uh, uh, you know uh, circuit and another is the active method. We have focused our discussion today by taking an example where thermocouple is placed in an environment where there is a you know step change temperature input that is we have uh, you know discussed the passive method considering an example where the forcing function is sinusoidal that means thermocouple is allowed to measure temperature in an environment where there is step change input. And from the mathematical exercise we have understood what are the different issues we need to consider while designing the circuit to be integrated the thermocouple and finally you have seen what are the what is the advantage and disadvantage of using this you know RC circuit. So, with this I stop my discussion today and we will continue our discussion in the next class. Thank you.